Okay, so we're still building towards how to solve an MDP in even the simplified setting where we have access to P and R. And so we have access to the entire specification of the MDP, SA, P, R, and the discount factor gamma. Now, we're going to define this function that's called the state value function. It's a function of both the state and of a policy that you're currently following. And uh, that will serve as a useful abstraction as we go forward. So let's define this value function of a state S under policy pi, the state value function of state S under policy pi. It's simply the expected utility, which remember is the sum of discounted rewards, the expected utility of starting in state S and acting according to the policy pi. And it looks like this, right? So you can write it down more mathematically as the sum of all future rewards uh, after starting in a uh, you know, state S at the current time instant. And what's not specified here already is that the rewards come from following the policy pi. Right? So there's a sequence of rewards generating, generated by following pi. So that's the value function of a state S under policy pi. Now we can define a similar quantity for the optimal policy. We aren't doing anything, partic anything particularly exciting here. We're just plugging in the optimal policy pi star into this, uh, into this expression here. And that will lead to this. It's exactly the same expression there, except now you're talking about the rewards generated by following pi star, all right? So keep this in mind as we go forward. All right, now that we've seen state value functions of policies, let's talk about action value functions of policies. Now action value functions are the exact same thing that we defined on the previous slide, except that now we have assumed that we've not just, we're not just at a current state, we've also executed a particular action from it. And we now have to take the expected value of future rewards after having executed the action. So we are no longer computing the expected future rewards, uh, the expected future utility conditioned on being in a state. We're instead computing the expected future utility conditioned both on being in a state and performing a particular action from that state. And you can think of this in terms of the diagram that we drew earlier as trying to compute the, the value function of not the true states, like we saw on the previous slide, but of instead the Q states, right? These are the, the blue circles that correspond to uh, kind of an imaginary state that exists after having executed a particular action A from state S. So remember we call them Q state, and sure enough, we're calling these action value functions now Q functions. So more formally, the Q value of taking action A in state S and then following policy pi is what the, the Q function is. So it's the expected utility of taking action A in S and then following the policy pi. So it's still a function of both the policy and the state, but it's also a function of the action that you've already executed from that state. So you can define it as Q pi of S comma A is the expected future utility, where now these future rewards are coming from uh, executing first action A, then following the policy. Remember policy pi can prescribe the actions to take from any state. That's, the, that's, what a pro, that's what a policy is, that maps from states to actions. But what we're gonna do is just for the first step, we're not gonna follow the policy. Instead, we're going to, to execute this first action A. And after that, we'll start following the policy. So that's the Q value um, defined in general. Now you can define this also analogously for the optimal policy. And then it will be called the optimal Q value, which is called Q star. Q star is just Q pi when pi equals pi star, right? So that's basically what it is. And you can now imagine that, um, well, let's think about why we actually defined this Q star. Why, why weren't we comfortable with just using the state value function? Well, the answer to that, and the reason why a lot of what we'll see uh, going forward in RL uh, has to do with this Q function is because if you had this optimal Q value somehow, if you somehow had the optimal Q star, then you can easily determine what the policy pi star is. Because the policy pi star, remember Q star is telling you what is the value, what is the utility to be gained by executing an, executing an action A at state S and then following the optimal policy. That means that you don't have to worry about things that happen after that first step because afterwards you're guaranteed to be following the optimal policy. That's what the definition of Q star is, right? And so you now, all that you have to optimize over is that first action A, 
that would give you the um, the policy. So specifically, you can greedily determine uh, the optimal policy pi star from q star by simply setting pi star of s, the output of pi star of s, remember it has to be an action. So we're going to greedily set it to uh, the argmax of q star, right? So the action that maximizes q star of s comma a is going to be the action that will be output by the optimal policy. All right, so having defined the state and action value functions, we are finally now ready to encounter the Bellman equations, which are uh, a cornerstone of all of reinforcement learning, really. And the Bellman equation essentially connects value functions at consecutive time steps. And there are uh, Bellman equations for both the, value, the state value function as well as for the action value function. Uh, we will write down a version of this for the state value function now and we'll return to the other variants later. So before doing that, let's observe that the state value function and the action value function are actually closely related. In particular, um, for the optimal policy, the state value function and action value function are related in this way. Uh, for the optimal policy, the maximum over the Q star, uh, the maximum over all, all actions of the Q star is exactly what V star is. Because remember, V star is the optimal expected return and Q star is the optimal expected return after executing action A. And so if action A were optimal, then the optimal expected return would be exactly uh, the thing on the left here, right? So the optimal value of S is um, what we get by picking the optimal action. The optimal value function of S is what we get by picking the optimal action. Now, the next thing will take a little bit of time to parse. This is effectively going to, this is, this is basically the Bellman equation already. And what it does is it says, having executed action A from state S, um, we could potentially transition to one of several possible states afterwards. And that's exactly what the transition probability P, which is one of the elements in the MDP tuple tells us. It tells us which state we'll transition to, what the probabilities are of transitioning to various states, right? So this is going to tell us which state we transition to. And now for the rest of it, let's pretend that we know that we've transitioned to a particular state S prime. Then Q star is simply going to be the reward that we get for transitioning from S by executing action A to state S prime, and then adding the discounted value function of the new state that we ended up at S prime. This is the optimal value function now, right? We're trying to compute the optimal state uh, action value function and um, here and here we are using the optimal state value function. So let's think about what's going on here, right? This is basically an expectation because expectations, remember, are sum of p of x times x. The expected, expected value of x is the sum of p of x times x. And so this is the expectation of the future reward. This is the future reward. The expectation of the future reward where the probability of computing the expectation over is the transition probability to new states after executing action A, all right? So you can think of this as the expected value over the successor state S prime of the current reward that you get for um, transitioning from S to S prime through action A plus gamma times the discounted future reward. And now we can kind of plug in um, V star. We can either plug in the, the expression for V star over here into this and get the Bellman equation in terms of Q star or we can do what we're doing right now, which is that we are going to take, we're gonna substitute this expression into this, right? And that will give you V star of S is maximum over all actions of Q star of S comma A, and Q star of S comma A is this stuff, and that's basically this. All right, so that's the Bellman equation. And we'll see very soon how this is extremely valuable in um, computing the optimal policy both in known MDPs where S, A, P, R, gamma are all known and in reinforcement learning where P and R are going to be unknown.